Welcome to another episode of Rithu the Explorer Travel Vlog. In this episode, let's dive into the sparkling, most controversial, often mysterious depths of one of the most famous jewels in the world, the Koh-i-Noor. So where can you find the Koh-i-Noor? Currently, it's on display for public viewing at the Tower of London. We bought the tickets for Tower of London at a cost of £33.60, roughly equivalent to 3,561 Indian rupees per person. The Tower of London stands as an iconic symbol of British history, looming majestically on the banks of the River Thames in the heart of London. With its origins dating back nearly a millennium, This historic fortress has served variously as a royal palace, a prison, an armory, a treasury, a menagerie, and even as the home of the crown jewels of England. Its rich and often tumultuous history makes it one of the most visited and revered landmarks in the United Kingdom. Let's head over to check out the crown jewels in the Tower of London now. The crown jewels, housed within the Tower of London, represent an unparalleled collection of regalia and ceremonial objects that symbolize the monarchy and its authority in the United Kingdom. The primary motivation behind our visit to the Tower of London was to witness the renowned crown jewels, particularly the Koh-i-Noor diamond. Given its controversial history, seeing the Koh-i-Noor in person was a lifelong aspiration. However, we were disappointed to discover that photography and videography were prohibited within the Crown Jewels exhibit. Nonetheless, the experience of viewing the dazzling collection of diamonds, crowns, and gold plates was indescribable and left us in awe. Guarded within the Jewel House, a highly secure chamber within the Tower Complex, these treasures hold immense historical and cultural significance, embodying centuries of royal tradition and pageantry. The crown jewels consist of various items, including crowns, scepters, orbs, swords, and ceremonial regalia, crafted from precious metals and adorned with an array of dazzling gemstones. The Koh-i-Noor diamond holds a storied place within the Tower of London's history, symbolizing both wealth and power. Acquired by the British East India Company in 1849 during the rule of the British Empire in India, The Koh-i-Noor was subsequently presented to Queen Victoria. 
The Kohinoor diamond, whose name means mountain of light in Persian, has a remarkable history that spans centuries and continents. Mined from the Kollur mines, also known as the Golconda mines, in India, this extraordinary gem has passed through the hands of numerous rulers and conquerors, each adding to its storied legacy. The Kohinoor's journey began in the hands of the Kakatiya dynasty, who prized the diamond for its exceptional size and clarity. The Kohinoor diamond, weighing 105 carats, around 21 grams, and oval-shaped, is one of the most controversial diamonds in the world. Over time, it came into the possession of Alauddin Kilji, the powerful sultan of Delhi, before finding its way to Babur, the founder of the Mughal Empire. Under the reign of Shah Jahan, the Kohinoor became a part of illustrious Mughal treasury. Shah Jahan's era, known as the Golden Age of the Mughals, was characterized by cultural, architectural, and artistic achievements, and the Kohinoor's presence added to the splendor of his court. Nevertheless, both the Kohinoor diamond and the peacock throne represent the pinnacle of luxury and artistic achievement in India's royal history, captivating admirers with their beauty, grandeur, and enduring allure. In 1739, Emperor Nader Shah ruler of Iran and founder of the Afsharid dynasty, initiated an invasion of northern India. Following his army's decisive victory over the Mughals at the Battle of Karnal, Nader Shah proceeded to besiege and eventually capture the Mughal capital of Delhi. After the departure of the Iranian troops from Delhi, Nader Shah made a significant gesture by returning all territories east of the Indus River, which he had conquered, to Muhammad Shah, the Mughal emperor. However, before their departure, the Iranian military loaded a massive amount of plundered riches, including treasures and riches accumulated during the invasion. This vast haul of plunder, including the peacock throne and the Kohinoor diamond, was transported on a staggering number of animals, 700 elephants, 4,000 camels, and 12,000 horses, symbolizing the extent of their conquest and the wealth acquired from their campaign. Nader Shah used the Kohinoor diamond to craft an armlet, The Kohinoor diamond then passed into the possession of Ahmad Shah Durrani in Afghanistan. It eventually came into the possession of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. The ruler of the Sikh Empire in Punjab governed extensive territories that stretched across significant regions of present-day Pakistan and India. However, the Kohinoor's fate took a dramatic turn with the rise of the British East India Company. Lord Dalhousie, who served as the Governor General of India from 1848 to 1856, played a pivotal role in the transfer of the Koh i Noor diamond from the East India Company to Queen Victoria. During his tenure, the East India Company, representing the British government, obtained the Koh i Noor after the demise of Ranjit Singh. After the Second Anglo Sikh War in 1848 to 49 and the Treaty of Lahore, the Koh i Noor diamond was surrendered to the British crown. Later, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's son, Duleep Singh, ascended to the position of Maharaja of the Sikh Empire at the young age of five. Following the conclusion of the Second Anglo-Sikh War, at the age of 15, he was exiled to England with a pension, marking the end of the line for Sikh Maharajas in the Punjab. Maharani Jind Kaur, regent of the Sikh Empire and mother of Duleep Singh, was forcibly separated from her son. In 1850, under Lord Dalhousie's direction, the Koh i Noor was presented to Queen Victoria, symbolizing British supremacy in India. The Koh i Noor diamond is shrouded in a legendary curse, believed to bring misfortune to its owners. According to folklore, he who owns this diamond will own the world, but will also know all its misfortunes. Only God or woman can wear it with impunity. Originally weighing 186 carats, that is 37 grams, the Koh i Noor was notably larger before it was cut. However, its size was reduced to 105.6 carats, approximately 21 grams, after being recut during Queen Victoria's reign. While Queen Victoria wore the diamond as a brooch, it eventually became part of the crown jewels, first in the crown of Queen Alexandra, the wife of Edward VII, 
Queen Victoria's oldest son. And then in the crown of Queen Mary, the wife of George V, grandson of Queen Victoria. The diamond came to its current place of honor in 1937. At the front of the crown worn by the Queen Mother, wife of George VI, and mother of Queen Elizabeth II. Upon the Queen Mother's demise in 2002, the crown adorned her coffin during the lying in state and funeral ceremonies. These historic crowns are now exhibited at the Jewel House within the Tower of London, featuring crystal replicas of the diamond embedded in the earlier crowns, Additionally, visitors can view the original armlet presented to Queen Victoria. A glass rendition of the Koh-i-Noor offers insight into its appearance upon arrival in the United Kingdom. Among the most famous pieces is the Imperial State Crown, worn by monarchs during the state opening of Parliament and other important ceremonial occasions. Adorned with over 2,800 diamonds, including the magnificent Cullinan II diamond, as well as pearls, the Black Prince's Ruby, the Stuart Sapphire, St. Edward's Sapphire, and other precious stones. The Imperial State Crown is a stunning example of craftsmanship and luxury. Another highlight of the collection is the Sovereign Scepter with Cross, which features the Cullinan I Diamond, the largest clear-cut diamond in the world, weighing an astonishing 530 carats. This remarkable gemstone is set atop the scepter, symbolizing the monarch's authority and power. Other notable pieces include the St. Edward's crown used for the coronation of British monarchs, the sovereign's orb, representing the monarch's role as defender of the faith and the sword of state, signifying the monarch's role as protector of the realm. The history of the crown jewels is as rich and storied as the monarchy itself. Many of the pieces have been passed down through generations of monarchs, while others have been created or modified for specific coronations and events. The jewels have survived wars, political upheavals, and even attempts at theft, thanks in part to the stringent security measures in place at the Tower of London. Visitors to the Tower of London have the opportunity to view the crown jewels firsthand, as they are displayed in a specially designed exhibition within the Jewel House. Here, visitors can marvel at the exquisite craftsmanship and breathtaking beauty of these historic treasures, while learning about their significance and the ceremonies in which they are used. We purchased a miniature crown from their souvenir shop, a wonderful memento to remember our visit to the crown jewel. Today, the Tower of London is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of London's most popular tourist attractions. Visitors from around the world flock to explore its ancient battlements, marvel at its medieval architecture, and admire the priceless crown jewels housed within the Jewel House. The Yeoman Warders, popularly known as Beefeaters, provide guided tours, regaling visitors with tales of the Tower's history and the colorful characters who inhabited it. This monument is a living piece of history that has evolved through the generations. It's witnessed the best and worst of humanity, from the splendor of coronations to the plotting within its walls that has shaped the narrative of the British Isle. If you're interested in learning more about this location and its historical significance, be sure to watch my episode on the Tower of London. I'll include the link in the description box below. Thanks for joining me in this episode about the koh -Noor diamond. It's been great exploring the fascinating story behind this incredible diamond. What do you think? Should the koh -Noor go back to where it came from or stay as part of the British crown jewels? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And remember, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and hit the subscribe button for more content like this.